Well, as you guys know, I am all about making gardening easier. And if I can find a tool that helps me, oh, I don't know, just do it more easily, more quickly, more efficiently, then I am happy to embrace a power tool, These some of these battery operated power tools. And no, this is not a sponsored post, but you guys know I love the works brand of these lightweight tools. In fact, I just got my son in Denver, the entire suite of them, the lawn mower, the blower, awesome. everything. I know, I'm such a good mom, <laughs> such a good mom. <laughs> so you guys know, I've used this, this blower forever. Now, because of you, I am trying out a new product. I've actually already tested it and I really do like it. So of course I want to share it with you on this Wednesday walkabout. Now one thing I love about all of these tools is that the battery is interchangeable with all of the different tools that you're using. So this is the new one that I'm, I am trying out. It is a battery operated pruner. Now I'm gonna demonstrate that shortly. But one of the things I love about them is that they do hold a charge for a pretty long period of time, but I always have a backup battery just in case. And when I'm using these tools, I just keep a charger plugged in over here and when it's not in use i keep it in that closet right inside the door so it's always at the ready i've got an outlet right here underneath my mailbox so if one of them starts to die starts to get a little bit weak i can just plug it back in do something else in the garden and then come back and get the battery so i love the ease of that now let's go down and do one of my favorite things which is thinning out and pruning up you guys have asked me when I was going to do it. Well, today <laughs> on this Wednesday walkabout is the day. Stuart, let's go prune up the viburnum. Now, what I love about this new tool is that I have noticed, sadly, that I am starting to develop a little bit of arthritis in here, probably because of all of the pruning that I have done over the years. So anything that will make pruning easier, particularly when there's pretty much resistance, in other words, the branch is thick enough that I really have to exert some pressure to be able to take that limb off, then if I can find a tool that helps me do that, I am going to use it. So again, this was recommended by one of you, and I am so glad that I took you up on, took you up on it to try it out. Now, this is my question of the day. After seeing my beautiful viburnum at the other house, and in short order, I anticipate this one will be equally as beautiful. Have you tried limbing up some kind of shrub to make it appear like it's a small tree? Because I, there are so many advantages to that. One of them being that it gets better air circulation through here, which I've been talking about recently. The reason that's, in, that's important is because it kind of cools down the plant and it also gives better air circulation so that pests, aren't, pests and disease aren't as likely to take hold. So that's my question of the day. Have you done it? And then if not, here is my technique. So my, first of all, my vision for this is basically what my other one looked like. I want a small tree that will cascade up and over and these huge white blooms in the spring will be kind of like, oh, an overhang so that when kiddos are Sorry. walking back one to school, uh, walking that. to school Did or walkers again? are just out here, no, I won't try again. <laughs> Sorry, my watch had a life of its own. So what I want to do is thin out the interior of this and have it up and over and have a small tree that's kind of cascading. So, Stuart, let's get a close-up here. Okay. Now, 
while I want people to be able to walk underneath its canopy, I don't want them stabbed in the eye by any projecting no, branches that not. come out and might also impede their passage up and down the sidewalk. Especially when staring at a phone. Yes, a especially when staring at a phone and not being attentive <laughs> as I am so often. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one off all the way at the base. Now there's a little bit of a learning curve I've decided to this and it will take a little bit of time to get the time down but you compress this button below you'll hear that little beep and then it opens <laughs> and shuts if it's a little bit heavy for you it's not prohibitively heavy but it's definitely heavier than regular hand pruners then I would say just do a little bit at a time and then come back and do it later now one thing about this product again this is not a sponsored post I'm just giving you these hints what I loved about the reviews was that the open and close time is much quicker than it is on some other battery operated pruners. So I think that's something to keep in mind. So again, when I hear that beep, I know it's ready to go. So look, this go. is like butter, baby. Look at that. Whoa. I know, isn't that just so fun? It's just another thing that's fun. So the smaller ones, I can get two. Well, I've definitely had my hand hurt after cutting a lot of limbs. Yes, so yeah, that, even, that if even, yeah, even, even if you don't have arthritis. Even if you don't have arthritis. But it also is <laughs> pretty hand. good. Let me see, now I have to stop. Oh, I gotta get over here. Yeah. No, that was, that was, that was scary, scary butter-like. Yes, and do you want to be careful about where you place your hands? Uh, yes. Of course you do. <laughs> I think I'm not the only one watching this, like, yes, with a little course, bit of horror. Yes, of course you do. <laughs> so maybe, when at all possible, don't put your hand on there. Well, just, yeah, uh, be I'm careful. sure. Like, well, you have to be I'm careful sure with we're regular gonna ones, too. I'm sure we're going to get comments too. about it. Well, you have to be careful with regular ones, too. I mean. Yeah, no, you absolutely do. And I myself have cut, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's never... cut my fingers from You've just using regular attention. pruners. Okay, this one, does it stay or does it go? I, I only want it to go just because I want to see you cut it. So that's that's the wrong reason. That's so don't the do wrong it because... reason. So I think. <laughs> because Sorry. Of what I want. Sorry, Stuart. I'll take off. <laughs> And some of these I can just pull off with my hand. Okay, but here you go. Now, see, Stuart, you're, you are, I can already tell that you too are being seduced by how fun this is. I mean, and it is fun, yeah, isn't it's, it? It's, it's, it's like a toy, yeah. It is, I know. We're gonna take a, a, take a, a woman and her toys. We're gonna take a quick chip and dip break. Hold on, pause, Linda. Okay. Gonna, I'm gonna get a chip and dip out of your hat. Did you get it? No, I'm gonna punk the middle. Oh, I can't punk the middle okay. down. Okay, sorry. There's no bowl in the middle right sorry. now. Sorry. I tried. Sorry. Okay. Stuart calls this my chip and dip hat. He's so clever, aren't you, Stuart? I am. So Sometimes. Okay. So I'm gonna get more of these. Now, it may be that because of the bulk of this, that gosh that's fun here's a question some people have to be thinking yeah how long did it take that one they saw a picture of recently oh. to grow to, to get to from here to there well uh there was a dedicated bubbler on that one and by that i mean there was a dedicated um a dedicated uh irrigation head okay i'm see right here i'm doing something wrong I just wasn't holding my mouth right, I guess. Um, there was a dedicated bubbler or irrigation uh, outlet, if you will, irrigation water, water plug at the bottom, water right, supply yeah. at, the, at, the, at the base. This one, because it does not have that, though this area is irrigated, but it doesn't have a dedicated bubbler. And maybe I'll put one on a little bit later. I guess the trick to doing this, Stuart, to be safe is to, if you're going to hold it, hold it way out. Yeah. At the tip. See, it, it, there, is a, there is a learning curve. Or don't hold it at all. I think that's generally best, but. Yeah, all those 
all of you guys out there that like to mother me, I'm sure will be saying, Linda, don't do this, don't do that. Oh, yeah. um, okay, they so just care that about other you. one, in answer to, in answer to your question, uh, that one probably took about just three to four years. That seems so like get, less than I would have guessed. Yeah, to get to the point where it was pretty massive. That's pretty now, cool. Now this one, because I'm starting this garden when I'm a lot older, I have started with a larger specimen. So less time for this one. It, Is well, that what you're implying? Well, less because it started out bigger, more because at this point I don't have a dedicated irrigation bubbler head at the base. Now my mom has one on the corner of her, of, on her front yard, corner of her house, yeah. and it's been there for years and never got any bigger than about this. Is it irrigated? Uh, no, probably not. No. Yeah, so hers probably doesn't have any irrigation at all. So if you supply water directly to this plant, it grows like crazy. It will probably grow much more of anything if you irrigate it, you it will something. grow much more rapidly than if you don't artificially irrigate it. That doesn't mean you can't do it. It just it just means that it won't grow as quickly. It's like anything. I mean, well, it makes you know, it makes total sense. Give it more give it more of what it needs to survive right. and grow. It'll right. grow and it better. will grow faster. It'll grow more quickly. I guess it's, um, you know you don't think of something the size of that tree is getting that big that quick. Well, it that quickly. Yeah, it did. Because how long do it trees did. take to get that big? Well, it just depends on the tree. Some are fast growing, some are slow growing. That's a good answer, probably. <laughs> yeah. Stuart, have I taught you nothing? That's a lot, have but not I everything. Have I taught you nothing? And I love this process, though, because the more it limbs it's up, so, it just starts to I look know. so good. It's just so gratifying. And I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I'm sure I was deterred because I knew it would kind of hurt my hand. And so I didn't. So not only am I limbing it up and getting more air circulation and it's starting to look more like a tree, but it's also just cleaning up the interior and making it look less messy. And that makes me happy because <laughs> one of my signature touches is that I like a tidy garden and there's nothing wrong if you like a wilder garden as I've said a million times there's many different forms of beauty this is just the form of beauty that I like in my garden so we here at the garden life we can acknowledge that there is there are sometimes many white, right ways to do things. And I'm trying to get as close to the trunk as I possibly can. Yeah, let's show I don't them. know if you can see that. On the small ones? Yeah, on the small ones. And sometimes I can go back in again with my finger. And now you'll notice that I am doing this standing on the walkway and not on this little hill and that's a safety measure for those that I have to prune off up there I might use my hand pruners instead of these just to be a little bit more safe now that's pretty big do I want to remove it or not it's kind of nice to be able to stand down this low yeah enough. it is <laughs> it is and Okay, this is one of those uh -oh. points. What we got? Should it stay or should it go, should Stuart? Should it stay or should I go? So see this huge one? Where are we at? Okay, right here. Let me get over here where I can see it. Yeah. This big Move one? Now that's a really big one, but it's cross branching at the bottom. It's growing at an awkward angle and ultimately, and this may determine, make my decision for me, it will, I'm not only wanting to impede traffic on the sidewalk, but I'm wanting to also elevate the canopy over time so that when I go up and down my walkway... They can see it way better from this side. So okay. You can feel it. When I go up and down the walkway, that I'm not impeding my passage either. So this one... Yeah, oh, it was had, that gratifying or what? I would agree because it was doing all the things you It was just doing said. all the things I <laughs> wanted to do. So, you, you know, there really is... There's even that one still there. Is it not an issue? 
Uh, yes, it is still there. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, there we go. See? Boom. It's so, like, we're, it's like cutting it ourselves, huh? So there we go. Now there's 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 more pruning that we can do here, but I'm not going to take the entire Wednesday walkabout with you guys out here in the <laughs> sun with me because it is supposed to get up to what today, Stuart? A hundred is what they say. Hundred and two. Oh God, two. it's bigger. So obviously I'm doing this in the cool of the morning. And my AC went out this morning. Oh, it did. That's yeah. not good. The guy is on his way to my house right now. To oh, fix I it. hope I hope you have. I hope you have power. And by the way, I am so sorry for all the people around the country up in, in, I know, up in Tulsa, but so many people around the country are without power. I am so, so, I am so, so sorry. If you were here, I would invite you to come and enjoy my air conditioning. I mean, really, that's just, well, yeah, Texas when it gets this of hot. Okay, so like I say, there's more that I can do, and I will finish this up a little bit later. But for right now, I think you guys get the gist. Now, is this a little bit addicting? And do I just want to keep going and going and going? Yes. And you may be asking, is this the time of year to do it? Well, yes, it is. Um, I'm not going to be really overly aggressive. I'm, I'm not taking off more than a third, but definitely I think uh, that there are benefits to doing it now that outweigh any cons. Um, and because it's so hot, I don't anticipate that this kind of pruning is going to throw out just a ton of new growth and remember that that's something that pruning does is it encourages whether you're deadheading or doing other things it encourages new growth so there you go i highly recommend this tool i can't thank and if you are the one let us know if you are the one that recommended it thank you thank you of course i will put the link below but you guys what we're trying to do is consolidate a bunch of the links because it can be a little bit overwhelming so if you click on the link in the description box or if you're on instagram and you click on that one link it will take you to my favorite things and they are categorized by gardening by uh, decor by just various uh, common sense categories. So that's how you can easily find things. For example, this, my favorite, some of my favorite garden tools. So Stuart, let's move on because there are a couple of other things that I want to show all of you guys out there on this Wednesday walkabout. See, I mean, I wasn't gonna do this, and this is what I call accidental gardening. I wasn't going to tackle these yopons. But I've got this toy, and it is just <laughs> so, it's just so fun. Okay, come on, Linda. There is, you, you press this button first. It's like a safety thing. You press this first, and then you press the trigger. And Stuart was asking me if I had to apply any pressure. No, it's like butter, baby. I don't have to apply any pressure whatsoever it does all of the work for me and it gets it can get just right near the trunk if i position it correctly so what i love about these kind of tools is they make me go ahead and tackle a job that i had kind of been putting off for whatever reason well, and think about how many times a tool gets in your way of doing the job. Like yeah, if it's some early step in the process stops you from completing the right, process. right. This is it's the opposite. It's so true. Of that. Okay. <laughs> See, when you hear that clicking noise, that's because I'm pressing the trigger before I'm putting on the safety oh. valve. See, so. And it makes that pleasant little noise, that pleasant little noise. So 
This was my vision for these yopons is that they would be up and open and airy and not real thick like they sometimes grow. Um, because I really want them to look a little bit more delicate. To me, I actually, I used to not like Yopon Hollies. But now, to me, I think they make a great replacement for, because olive trees aren't reliably hardy here. And because of that, I can use I can use these Yopon Hollies and kind of get the look. And boy, these are tough. These are very, very tough. Okay, you guys will be proud. I actually have my basket near me today so I can, I can clean up as I go. So there are more that I need to take off. I recognize that. But again, I've already I've already interrupted what I was going to do by showing you my Yopon Holly. So these are a great tough plant and I, I actually think I'm going to use more of them in the back. And one thing that I like is it kind of creates this high dappled shade so that things, if, if you don't thin them out, the things that grow underneath them, like in this case I've got some Leucotho and some uh, better boxwood and I've got some uh, Miss Bonnie Dwarf Spirea. So those are getting just the right amount. So I find, now this is an instance where I can use them on this, <laughs> but it probably, it's a little overkill. It's a little overkill. <laughs> yeah, yes, no, I agree. I agree, and I can't seem to figure out my rhythm here. I can figure out my rhythm better uh, on the Yopon and the Viburnum. I know you guys want one now. <laughs> Put this on your Christmas list or go ahead and get one uh, because when it's really hot, this is a time saver and it'll keep you from having to be outside for longer. Um, but put this on your Christmas list or your birthday list uh, for both yourself, uh, whether your, yourself is a husband or a wife or a partner or a girlfriend or a kid or a whomever, this would just make a great, great gift. But I'm going to very carefully set this down now because I will probably resume doing that once we're finished shooting. So Stuart, come over this way because I, I, I do want, I know you guys like to get little updates on things. So I wanna give you little updates. Um, I just love things that make me happy. And oh my goodness, look at this Stuart. Look at those sun gold tomatoes there. They are now gold. Look at all those peppers I have to be harvested. I left them on there. I didn't go ahead and take them off because I wanted to show you. And look over there, there is some, there's some green coming out of that. Now probably what I'm gonna do over here is this is a case of don't let your plants boss you. Now, yes, there are there's potential for some more tomatoes on here, but this is still cascading out a little bit further than I want and looking a little bit too wild. So yes, Stuart, this is overkill, but these are the pruners <laughs> that I have with me right here. I'm gonna cut this right above where those will then turn into little tomatoes. And any additional, you sure you don't need the chainsaw? Leafy. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> then they probably make a chainsaw. Um, any additional leafiness, I can go ahead and cut off, especially if it's buggy. Stuart, Stuart says these clever little things, and then I just keep going on talking like I didn't even, I didn't even hear him because uh, I get so wrapped up in what I'm doing. But 
I love this window box. I know there are so many of you that thought I was crazy, but I think it looks spectacular. Look at this. Remember this, Stuart, this, this little thing that just looked like an asparagus pod projecting out of here? Look at it now. Super Look green. at me now. It's Look at more, both of these. It's a more vibrant green than it was like. Oh yesterday. yeah, yeah. And and it's big and it's healthy. Some of the original stuff was woody. This was one you may recall that I overwintered. Okay, so many of you are gonna say, Linda, point your scissors, pruners, whatever it is, down. Um, but I think this looks absolutely brilliant and it, it just keeps looking better even in the heat. So, and it looks fabulous from the inside. If you were taking a bath right inside there, uh, you would appreciate this as much as I do. So it's, it's a giver both for inside beauty and for outside beauty. Now there's just a couple of other things that I wanna show you because it's still, I mean, it's hot, Stuart, but it's not that hot yet. It's not too bad yet. It's not too bad yet. So, truly, the Cleome, or AKA spider plant, is spider flower, is just exceeding my expectations. I have never had, I, th I think one thing that I love best about this garden is something that I am also, uh, you know, a thing's greatest strength is its greatest weakness. And this is in full sun, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. But boy, the plants that want a lot of sun could not be happier. So the agapanthus, the cleome, the sunshine lagustrum, the candy butterfly, uh, it, it just... Whoa, look how big these guys are. I know, and look at these. Okay, these definitely are on my Holy favorite crap. things. And I'm, I'm so mad at myself because I have more of this seed and I want to plant another round of it, but I can't find the seed. It's, I don't know, in the nest that it's is my- Boxwood basil. Boxwood basil. basil. And in the past, you guys, I've only grown this in pots. Man, from now on, I'm growing it <laughs> in the ground because this is perfect. And in the back, I anticipate when I have some raised beds and I don't want to have boxwood in the corners, I probably will use boxwood basil. Now what I have done, since I haven't been able to find my seed, and by the way, yes, you can still plant basil seed right now. It would be a great time to do it. Um, I have taken some cuttings that are rooting, and once those cuttings have some roots on them, then I will put a little bit more in here because I can see some other spots where I would really like them. But again, because this is full sun, man, these are happy. And this shows the brilliance of good air circulation. So since I, I have given them the, a room of their own, a little Virginia Woolf reference there, a room of their own, then they have the space to not only perform beautifully and not have any pests, but in addition, they have that perfect globular spherical form because there is nothing impeding them on any, on any side. Now that Veronica is a little bit right there, but once it blooms, I will cut it back and then this will restore its shape. But again, I could not be happier. Um, a little tease. This weekend, I am going to do my full throttle, every Southern Living plant that I planted, how they are performing, both good and bad, um, which I want to plant more of, and my comprehensive, I'll put it on my website, the comprehensive plant list of all of these plants that I used in this design. Uh, at least as far as the Southern Living plants go, because Southern Living made this happen. And it, it just could not be more brilliant. Stuart, come over here. Here is another tip that I simply must share. So, and this also kind of speaks to pruning because when you prune things, they grow in more thickly and more densely and they just don't look so rangy and in many cases so messy. So case in point, 
is I sheared back the Sunshine Ligustrum and that's why I have these perfect golden globes. And they look spectacular. And I did, I've done the same thing with the orange rocket. More on that later. But because of that, they have a nice tidy form, which looks very good as a, a complementary tension against how rounded and, and architectural their form is and the blousiness of the other things that are blooming around them, the salvia, everything else. That's one of my signature touches, and well, that's how I get it. 20 bees in there. I, I know. 20 bees. Like, and, look at that. They're everywhere. And those, and those moth caterpillars that even though they drive me crazy, they, I guess they're, they're caterpillar butterflies, the bees just moth blend butterflies. In. Yeah, they do blend in. But those, those white butterflies are the butterflies of cabbage worms and they attack your brassicas. But nevertheless, I guess they're sweet too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Carrie, Carrie the bug whisperer would get mad at me. Um, so, so, and then, can you see over there on the candy butterfly or butterfly candy? Now tell them what, that's the purple one, right? Yeah, the purple one. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's some tiny, tiny little, I have learned skipper butterflies they're crossed between a butterfly and a moth Carrie tells me and uh, wow there is a cross between the butterflies they, they, they're, they're, this this place is just it is so busy <laughs> all the time it slows down a little bit in the heat of the day but man it is just and I wish you could see Stuart right now because he's got one shoe off and one shoe on uh, hold on I swear an ant or something got in my shoe a minute ago, so I had to take one shoe off and scratch it while we were doing this. Okay. And well, we haven't broke since it happened, so I just had to do it while we were shooting. Okay. Okay, so one shoe off and one shoe on because an ant got in there. We, we suffer for our art. I need to do some deadheading on this beautiful white rose, but let us just take a moment to look at those white hydrangeas and how absolutely spectacular they are. And this is one of those cases that if something performs well, plant more of it. So I think what I'm gonna do is continue. I think I could use a couple more down here to kind of cover up these drip irrigation lines um, because this whole area in here is drip irrigation and I, I, because it will take a while with just the growth of what's in here to cover them, I think I'm gonna, I want to plant a couple, maybe three more of them. So this huge white wave continues all the way down here and will look beautiful against the evergreens, at least while I'm waiting for the boxwood and these Oakland hollies to get a little bit bigger. So I interrupted myself before talking about pruning. This is another perfect example. This started out as one in a little six pack, six cell pack of salvia. It was just tiny. This is its first year. But I keep, and, and salvia isn't something, or Dusty, excuse me, Dusty Miller, isn't something we normally think about pinching back. But by pinching this back, it has grown into what almost resembles a small shrub. And the nice thing is, if I mulch this, this will come back next year and be equally as large. So I'm continuing to do that. This one I pinched kind of as an experiment. These others I have started pinching now. And pretty soon I will have pinched beautiful Dusty Miller all across here and all across there. And it, I think, will look spectacular. I might put another one down there. Tell me what you guys think. But I really, really love the way it looks. And by the way, the other thing that I do is if some of the leaves around the edge get a little bit too big, like this one here is getting too big for my taste,
because I like everything, I want them to look kind of neat and tidy. So what I often do is I will pinch out or cut off some of the larger leaves and then I use them in uh, flower decorations inside, in a cut flower bouquet inside. And I will show you that on one of our weekend videos. So Stuart, I think, um, and the other reason to kind of keep things pruned back here is because I have lots of pentas that I planted and they've kind of been thugged out a little bit by some of the surrounding plants like the salvia and other things. And so by cutting them back a bit, then these will grow. I'll keep them deadheaded and they will have their day in the sun too. Uh, you guys enjoy your day in the sun. Make sure to wear sunscreen, make sure to wear a hat, and I hope you enjoyed this Wednesday walkabout.